Everyone says that when mixing bass, that's the hardest part to get right. But why is that? Besides needing a basic level of skill, you also need to have your monitoring correct. And that involves whether or not your monitors are flat or whether you use a house curve. In this video, we're going to find out what curve is right for you. Hi, my name is Michael Carrillo, AKA Hexpa. Welcome to my channel. I've been interested in acoustics my whole life, but have been actively studying it and applying it in small rooms since around 2009. So in this video, let's go into house curves and target curves and how it applies to home studio owners. So first let's define what target curves are. You might think of a response of an interface to be flat. Uh, more monitors these days are being designed to be flat as opposed to like an NS10 or something, which is mid forward. So what should we have at our listening position? Is flat the ideal or should we have some kind of tilt or uh, a low shelf boost? You know, if you go see live music, you want the music to sound exciting. You want there to be a lot of bass, not too much. Or if you go to a theater, you want to have nice big explosions. But for home studios, what, what is our goal? Our goal is to create balanced, you know, mixes. And in my experience and in the experience of others, having a flat response actually makes us mix too bassy because of the target, uh, because of the, you know, equal loudness contours and how we hear we, a flat bass response to us sounds too light. So what can you do? If you don't hear the bass, you turn it up. And if your monitors are flat, then the only place to turn it up is in your mix. So in my experience, like I'm saying, um, my base, my mixes became less bassy once I was able to uh, adjust the curve of my listening response at my listening position. Another thing to keep in mind is that the natural response of speakers is to have a bass boost, not necessarily um, in a free field or anechoic environment where there's no reflections, but the minute you add a floor or walls or you know two walls and a floor, you start dividing that spherical space into what's known as half space or quarter space or eighth space. And every time you do that, all the sound that would have gone the other direction is now reflected. And because of the long wavelengths of bass, those reflections are in phase and create constructive interference. The, the sum result is a bass boost in rooms for speakers. And you can confirm this by putting your head in a corner. You're gonna hear more bass, more sound pressure at those boundaries. And that's the same thing that's happening with speakers and rooms. We're used to that. Even our height off the ground is a certain, you know, distance, which creates a certain um, constructive interference and a destructive interference. So that's just actually part of how you hear. And if you look at headphones, even companies like Apple are looking at the research from Sean Olive and others who've worked with Harman. Um, and what listeners prefer is a slight boost. You know, they don't want a flat response just because that's what sounds natural. You know, who, and like they say, who would have thought? Now, I think that in 2024, everybody should be EQing their monitors. I, I went for years, a decade even, without EQing my monitors at all. And when I started, I went for a flat response. I, th I thought that that's what was best. But I went to the audio expert forum and Mr. Lawrence over there kind of clued me into that about a 1.5 dB per octave slope is what commercial... Um, control rooms use. So I tried that myself and I really think that uh, not only could I hear the bass better in the mixes, but the songs that I produced since haven't been so bass heavy, which is truly a hallmark of an amateur mix. So this could be just a fast track to making your mixes sound better. But when, what ended up working for me in the end was the default curves that you can get inside of Room EQ Wizard. If you don't know what Room EQ Wizard is, I recommend you Google it. It's uh, donationware, which allows you to take measurements of analog gear and also acoustic measurements of your room, display them. Most of the time, whenever you see acoustic measurements online, that's where these come from. But this software also allows you to create filters to compensate for the the errors in your room, um, specifically tailored to your response, because that's where the measurements uh, came from. It's really convenient. The like I'm saying, the target curves work best for me. If you know, if you uh, create a mix with those curves and you still feel like your your mixes are too bassy or not bassy enough, you can adjust them from there. Um, also, what I'll do in the blog post link below is provide links to Audio Science Review, which has a ton of information on house curves, people talking about their favorite house curves, um, why you might want to use one. But bear in mind that that forum tends to attract audiophile type 
people, very smart people. I'm not, I don't mean audiophile in, in the derogatory sense, but also home theater people. And obviously they're not creating mixes. So their goals are different. They want excitement. They want immersion. But what you want is something functional. So ultimately you're going to have to experiment. Maybe flat is right for you. Now, let me, let me, uh, mention this before I forget home studio owners. We tend to be in the near field. That's what they call being within about a meter of your speakers. The farther you get from your speakers, two things come into play. The boundary interference, um, becomes more of an issue because of the radiation patterns of the speakers. So you end up with sort of like more of a bass boost, the farther away you go. Also the directionality of high frequencies is more narrow. So it, the further you are away, the less likely you're right in the beam of the tweeter. Also, the atmosphere will absorb high frequencies. So the farther you go, part of the reason that you hear subwoofers from so far away, but not the rest of the music, besides the speakers are in a car and those are blocked, is the air is absorbing the high frequencies. They don't have as much energy, I suppose. Um, so in either case, the air absorbs the boundaries, boost the bass. So you end up with this sloped response and you can go and look at spinorama, uh, far field predicted responses to see um, that that is true. But in the near field, that's less of an effect. So a lot of that spinorama data doesn't apply as people like Amir will tell you. So Neumann have taken it upon themselves to give you more of a, a flat response. I believe that um, the IK multimedia stuff is like that as well. But I use um, Equalizer APO on Windows uh, with in conjunction with Room EQ Wizard. And I can tell you that using a flat response is not beneficial in my case. You know, I actually like how it sounds, but you know, I, I'm not like a big bass head. I'm an older guy. If you look at the research, young Canadian guys actually prefer more bass. But if you want to create mixes with the right amount of bass, you're going to have to find something that works for you. And the chances are it's not going to actually be flat. So I'm making this video just because I see a lot of information out there. People saying, oh, well, my look, I have a flat frequency response. Or I've heard people say negative things about the Neumann speakers. Ah, they're too mid forward. When really the Neumann speakers are flat and that's like an impulse response to your room. So whatever you're hearing from the monitors is actually really what, you, what your room sounds like. And if you don't like how the KH80 or something in the, in the modern KH line from Neumann sounds or Genelec, uh, then you just don't like how your room sounds and you got to fix that. And there's ways to do it. I got videos on my channel. There's other great channels. Um, but today, guys, what I want you to do is download Room EQ Wizard if you haven't. Go buy a linear Omni mic for like 100 bucks, 120 bucks. They're all basically the same. Um, don't you don't need to spend $500. Take measurements, average them out, generate some filters, apply them. Whether you're on PC, Mac, you can do it. Um, I'll, I'll post another link to how you can apply some of these uh, from Audio Science Review. And listen to the difference. Make a mix and hear what works best for you, okay? That's the way to do it. Don't be following these people online just because a subscriber counts or their names or they got a PhD. A lot of these people, I'm sorry to say, don't know what the fuck they're talking about, okay? If you want more from me, check the link in the description. Um, Hexy Dose, you can get my original music or more studio blabber like this. Also, like I said, I'll, I'll put a link to a blog post with all the resources in there. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.